It is a big cup of coffee day today for the markets. I have two economic catalyst to put out there for you. And also, I'm going to give some intraday updates for what we have for SPY, QQQ, IWM, and also NVIDIA. I'm going to stay hot on the tracks for that, especially up to their earnings, which are in one week. By the way, my afternoon video, I'm going to put out my NVIDIA stock price prediction and earnings projection. So be on the lookout for that. That document is going to be hot, spicy. All right, so let's toss this up here. The economic calendar that we're looking at this is for Wednesday, the 21st of August, 10 a.m., non-farm payrolls, annual revision. Anything, anything labor market related is going to be very, very important right now. So even if revisions aren't always the thing that are the biggest catalyst, I still think that 10 a.m., if we get a significant downward revision uh, showing for non-farm payrolls, not necessarily going to be a great thing today. However, if we get revised to the upside on these in a major way, that could also be a significant catalyst for us. Watch for market behavior around 10 a.m. Watch for what comes out for that 2 p.m. FOMC minutes. And then also uh, we got uh, news on the Jackson Hole Symposium coming up. Uh, it's just going to be a crazy time. As a matter of fact, the market running up to the Jackson Hole Symposium, not necessarily a great thing uh, in terms of uh, in terms of trying to continue to be bullish because it's going to throw out some some pretty big uncertainty out there, especially from what we saw back in 2022. People are still kind of shell shocked from that time. So if Jerome Powell comes out and for some reason uh, tells us stuff that we don't like about economic weakness rather than super hawk, because they doubt that the Fed is going to be super hawkish at this point in time like they were in 2022. That was kind of uh, something that was pretty painful to watch. Instead, this time, I think it's going to be more about talking about the economic strength that we have or the economic weakness. So I guess they both address the same thing, either less or more or less economic strength than expected, uh, more or less economic weakness. It's just shifting the perspective, if you will. So let's get into the charts. We're going to like do, like I said, SPY first. So let's put this up here. SPY, where do we find ourselves? This is the four hour chart that we're looking at. We actually cleared from most recent peak to most recent trough. We cleared the 78.6. We're sitting on top the resistance line that I was talking about yesterday in my video up above it, retest. Now we're up above. We might be green lighted up to about 563. So be on the lookout for that. Up above that, we have the all time high that we're moving towards for that 565. So if we're able to hold on to that as support, today could be a good day for SPY. Moving over into the queues, I'm going to take a pause and take a sip as you take a look at this. So we have most recent peak, most recent trough. What did we clear? Like, take a look at that. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you. And then I'll take my sip on this while you digest what you're seeing in front of you here. We actually cleared the 61.8 from most recent peak to trough. Mmm, delicious. So we broke it, we retested it, and then we rocketed up from there. Excellent. And I said we'd have trouble around 480 to 482. And that's kind of where you see all this mix. The bottom of these candles, 478.90. And then at the top of these candles, right around 482 to 483. So there's that little bit of a mix, a little bit of a mess, but it does look like we found ceiling. Looks like we found floor. It looks like we could push on towards that 487. So it could still be a good day for the markets. We got to watch for those catalysts though. We want to hold on to the 61.8 that's on here. We have a massive support area that's also down below here. So just be on the lookout for that for if we draw it down, watch for that bounce down here. If we move up, watch for that hesitation to come in right around 487. So moving over to IWM, what we're looking at on here is the hourly chart for the Russell 2000 ETF. So this white line going across, just to explain that to you, that is the top of a bullish channel. We're actually riding on top of that bullish channel. We broke up above. We hit this resistance up to the top. Couldn't make it up to the next ceiling. So we tried out floor again. We found floor at the top of the channel. Now we're bouncing back up. It looks like maybe possibly we're green lighted up to about 216. I would like to see a push on to my next price target at 217. This is, especially the floor tested down here, this is a free flow area if we're able to get up above that trend line. And we do have more room to the upside. You see this right here, this white line going across, even though this is one big resistance area, one big resistance band that you see across here, that at about 218, that's going to be a big test of resistance if we're able to make it up that far. So the top of this channel, huge support. Uh, the top of what we have up here uh, for this white line, if we do continue to the upside for the Russell 2000 stocks, that is going to be that's going to be pretty darn significant. We come up to that, we're probably going to get rejected at first. 
and then sell back down. We're gonna have to see. Now, mind you, these are intraday charts that we're looking at. So these are short time horizons and there's usually a lot of volatility and a lot of noise that's in here. The longer term trends are still pointing bullish for all three of these ETFs tracking major indices. So now for NVIDIA, where does NVIDIA find itself right now? Well, look at this resistance band that we're currently dancing around in. Now this right here, this is a trend line that goes across the most recent peaks that we've had. You can see that we had a strong candle moving up to it, hesitate a little bit, found out that it was a floor for us, and we were able to push up above that until we almost got to this ceiling up here, this 61.8 level of about 130 to 131. It's about right in the middle of those two, 135-ish. So uh, didn't quite make it up there, had to look for a floor, found it soon after, and then really found the floor on this trend line and tried to break through it. Nope, supported. Tried to break through it. We got there, yay. But then, well, uh, it, uh, oh, and now we have it back as support again. And so we'll see with that support tested and retested, we could be pushing back up towards that 130. We want to try and break this pe previous peak that we had when we closed the market a few days ago. My second price target of 130 was hit. If we're able to come back up there, this could be that next part of the run that takes us up to that 133-ish. It's actually rounded down to 133. So my price target 133, I tried to give whole dollars, whole dollar amounts. So we'll see if we push up here. If we do, it's about 133.38 to 133.50. And then we have a little bit more resistance at about 134. So as a matter of fact, we have a lot of resistance to that upside. And uh, we're going to find, uh, as a matter of fact, we have some whole number Fibonacci extension values in here at 136-ish to 137. So a uh, big resistance to that upside. And I would be very surprised. Now, mind you, if we hit, if we hit above 133 prior to earnings, I think that it's going to be tough to break the 136 to 137. I still think we're between 120 and 133 for earnings. That's the big uh, range that I'm giving on that one. However, we could most definitely, uh, if we do get outside of that, it's not going to be much to the upside. It's going to be another two to three percent to the upside. And that's, I'll put my name by that. That's what I think. Down here, another whole Fibonacci value. We have a 618 level, a 382 level, another 382 level down at the downside. That 120, I think, is going to be pretty darn strong for us. If we do end up outside of that prior to earnings, it's going to be about, you know, about one, two, maybe three percent. So I don't think that uh, I don't think that we're going to see any major moves unless the market makes NVIDIA make a major moves between it now and earnings. I do think that we're going to have a bit of travel from here. But when I say major moves, I'm talking like the 10, the 20, the 30 percent moves like I'd like the astounding moves uh, in either direction. I think that it's going to be uh, kind of a, a little bit flowy, if you will, a little bit jaunty between now and then. And we're going to be looking for where we want to finally settle. So uh, I'm going to be looking over the next several days as I take a look at the charts in a technical analysis sense for where I think we're going to settle for that earnings time. Something that's going to be the most interesting, the most uh, that, that causes the most uh, the uh, my goodness, words are hard this morning. The 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 biggest question to investors, as per the direction of the stock, what sets us up best for that coin flip, if you will, where that we have that 50-50 of well, man, like I really want to be bullish on earnings, but how like what's that path upward from here? So I think that we might come in high to it, or. Now, when we look at it, we're like, man, this thing's really sold off. It'd be great to go bullish on this thing, but it's so it's so low right now. I feel like people have already taken their profits and now it's time for that next move. Or it starts to cause us to doubt that earnings are going to be good because, oh man, maybe big investors in the background know something and that I don't know. And maybe I'm just about to get rug pulled on this and uh, and, and this thing's going to fall through the floor, which I don't, I don't expect that. Generally speaking, without putting out that NVIDIA stock price prediction and earnings projection, I'm bullish on NVIDIA stock. I'll put that out there. I'll give my final take leading up to those earnings. I will tell you what side of the coin, heads or tails, bullish or bearish I am for those earnings coming out. And I'll tell you about the price levels that I see as a result. So I will absolutely have that out for you this afternoon, this evening. I'm very, very excited to have that out there. It'll give you time to digest it. If you guys want to see what I'm doing with my buys and sells, you can do that over at the Discord available through the Patreon. That link is down in the description of this video. You can pause here and check that out. Also down in the description, you'll find a link to a technical analysis trading course. You can take a look at that as well. Make sure that when you sign up for that course that you use the code word DOCTOR, D-O-C-T-O-R, and that will get you access, lifetime access to that course. And it has the stock mode bread recipe that's in there, which is a trading strategy that I myself use. It is so clean, easy, straightforward to 
tell you when we're getting set up to, to make a play and also when is the time to get in, how to use options in that. I have a chapter in options in there as well. And you can see times when it might be good that uh, that buying would make sense and times that selling would make sense, even though it doesn't tell you to do that. And uh, we would never tell you to do that. It's, it's a good course. I can tell you what, very small, easy, digestible pieces. Go ahead and check that out. Guys, thank you very much for your time. I really do appreciate it. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning. And we'll see you in the next video.